Hello and welcome to the Thursday, April 22nd meeting of the Finance Committee. Pursuant to the governor's order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Laws Chapter 30A, Paragraph 20, as well as the Select Board's emergency order dated March 16th, 2020, the Finance Committee will be using remote participation for this meeting. The audio of this meeting is being recorded and will be posted to the town's webpage within 24 hours in accordance with the governor's emergency action requirement of keeping the public informed of actions during this meeting. I would ask that all participants remotely attending this meeting state your name for, the, for identification purposes each time you speak throughout the meeting. This time, a roll call of, of attendance will be taken. Ms. Zimmer. Here. Mr. Alfred. Here. Mr. Maxwell. Here. Mr. Whitaker. Here. Mr. Murphy. Here. Ms. Nersessian. Here. And I'm, of course, here. Okay, and Travis, we were going to try to right through the whole meeting and adjourn before you got home, but you beat us, uh, beat us to it. So, okay, so just to go over the ground rules, the, 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 because we're meeting kind of off cycle, so to speak, and we have another meeting on Tuesday, the real purpose of tonight is to take care of the easy stuff, to get our votes on the easy stuff so it lessens the burden for next Tuesday. Um, so I, uh, Travis will give us a quick update on where things stand, and then I'm going to share uh, our spreadsheet, which tracks Travis's, and uh, we'll start talking from there and going from votes from there. So go ahead, Travis. Okay. So do you want me to do the overview or um, <clears throat> um, or just the expenditures? Uh, you can, you can, the, yeah, you can do both. But but really, it's not. I think we're all in agreement on the revenue side at this point with the modeling. It's more like let's just talk about the budgets and uh, what what is different or what how. What has changed since the requests that we saw, other than the addition of the COLA money, right, which we, we talked about several weeks ago? Okay. Um, and so I, I had done a highlight of, of kind of all of the changes, even ones that we talked about, just so, you know, people understood from uh, the, the ones that have been done over time here. Um, and as, as Ken mentioned on the revenue, the only real change has been <clears throat> the House Ways Means budget, which was not substantially different from the governor's, but we're reflecting, uh, I'm reflecting that number now, which I believe uh, if we're on the same page, then um, again, not, not a huge difference, but all right. Yeah, we, yeah we had reflected that in our original, in our original comparison spreadsheet. So yeah, so we were kind of aligned with that when you made the change. Okay, so actually the House Ways Means from the governor's budget, if you... I know, I, that's, I know there's a small delta, I saw that, don't worry about it, I... I you no, know. I, I'm, I'm saying they made all of this big uh, to-do about how they were increasing all these things, but the actual revenue went up about 20,000, and then the charges and offsets went up 20,000, so the net impact to Holliston was a $4,000 decrease, but... Yes, well, that's and that's and by the way, that's something. If you, I know, I've only been here a short time, but I've brought that up at town meeting when people hear things like, you know, the the, the press release that says local aid went up three percent, but then they took it all. You know, I kind of point out that they take it away a lot of times in the charges, so it's it's not not atypical. All right, so I do have a couple things um, specific to budgets that have not been reviewed by this select board. They're ones that you review, Board of Health and Rec or two that um, I, I can get into when the chair is ready. I'll get into the ones first that I sent today, which includes all of sort of a compilation of changes. The one thing I wanted to talk about, um, I sort of showed this earlier and I wanna go through it. Um, there's a little bit of feedback and see if this works for people or if there, there's sort of uh, a need for change. But one of the things <clears throat> that, um, as I sat in my first day on the job, uh, July 20th at town meeting and um, the moderator read through the budget. Um, and I know that maybe that wasn't the, the process previously, but I think the budget does need to be read in some format. Um, what I'd like to see is a simplification um, if possible. So the way that um, I, I'm used to doing it and, and I think works for, uh, you know, generally the same purpose is to break it into mainly two categories um, and then a third for capital outlay where appropriate. So, for example, the select board budget, rather than the four sections that got read and voted at, at the July annual town meeting, it would be broken into two personal services and operating expenses. Then you get down to a budget like technology that has capital outlay and then you end up with three. Um, so normally, like last year, the select board would have been in four categories, um, and now it would be two. Uh, and so the, the impact of that is 
um, you know, sort of at the end of the year, what it what it ends up doing is is limits the amount of sort of um, ticky tack type uh, transactions in between lines that that are necessary by voting it in four sections. At the same point, what was brought up earlier is that sometimes, you know, for transparency, you know, you want to be aware of of anything where you're you're sort of going outside the lines. Um, and that that's always you know done above board. The information is shared. So I think we can we can accomplish that as well. Um, but I think that this is a cleaner way to vote it. Um, the other thing I would point out. So um, you know the majority of these budgets will all fall within personal services and then operating expenses, with a few that have capital outlay. And then when you get to the bottom, you'll see a few that just have other categories. So for example, debt service is one that would need to be voted within obviously the debt service budget, but also debt service would be voted within the water enterprise budget. Um, and then obviously the employee benefits budget, which has county retirement, workers comp, unemployment and benefits insurances would fall outside of that. Um, otherwise, pretty much everything falls within that rule of thumb. So I discussed this briefly earlier, but I'd be happy to get into it now if you'd like. Hey, Michelle, you have your hand up. So then just to confirm, if this is the way town meeting approves it, then you don't really need line item transfers at the end of the year? They don't you, would, need you would if they fall outside of these two buckets, right? So for the, the most common example that comes up in this is let's say you lose a person in the middle of the year and rather than simply backfilling the position, you hire a consulting firm to do the work, right? In that instance, you would still need to transfer the money from personal services because it was getting paid in a W-2 format to a, a person that works for the town into the the operating expenses. But otherwise, let's say, um, you know, I have, and the, the example that I use is within this, this um, uh, lecture, let me go to the next page here. So you, you'll see the categories that were voted last year, which is, personal services, purchase services, supplies and materials, and other expenses. So obviously supplies and materials within the select board budget of $300. I mean, you know, right now that would be requiring a transfer from let's say other expenses, because that's where I may have a balance at the end of the year to be able to cover it. That would no longer be necessary. At the same point, what was brought up and, and is, you know, I'd, I'd be happy to address is let's say, you know, the the select board was going over on professional services, right? Um, and and then just used another one of these categories, right? And, and at that point, I think it becomes more of a, a reporting mechanism that would be necessary to make sure everybody's aware um, and that everything's above board. But um, that would be that would be the sort of uh, two instances I can think of, right? And just just to be clear, Travis, right? That the, you're correct in the way you outlined it, but it goes both ways. In other words, when you have big like the example you just showed in the select board's budget, you know, if you looked at that the other way, which is which is you look at the number in professional services, it's a large number, right? So that was what I was kind of addressing, mentioning earlier, which is if that turned out to be, you know, 70,000 of actual versus 90,000 of appropriated, the concern would be that, you know, that, that would that 20,000 get used elsewhere in the budget without the town's, you know, it, Again, the town's not approving line by line each of these different lines, but but the FinCom is recommending based on this budget plan, and that I think that's the, that's the concern. Is just as long as there's an understanding that hey, even though it's technically okay to move the money around from our perspective, that's free cash. We don't. It shouldn't just be sloshed around because it's there. That's absolutely. That's, and so, I, and then just one more thing I would just make as a point is obviously all of these categories, the town accountant's job would be to make sure that nothing is being charged to a line that's inappropriate, right? So at the end of the year or at the quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, end of year tracking of the budget, any of these individual line items would still have the charges charged to them. And so we would be able to see, as you would be able to see, I would be able to see the town accountant would not allow anything sort of really outside the bounds, but there may get into a situation where you say, look, we really, you know, when the budget was set, that was not the intent. Um, and we would just have to address that. I, I don't personally have a huge concern about it, but I understand that it's a little bit of a change. So I just want to make sure. Um, but so one of the things that was discussed was, for example, that Ken just mentioned the um, professional services, for example. So to set like a limit, if it was above a certain amount to show it separately. So uh, to, to hit a threshold of 100,000, the only one with professional services of 100,000 is the water enterprise. 
uh, to set a limit of 50,000. There are four that have a $50,000 professional services line above 50,000, which is the select board that you see here, the sustainability coordinator, although that's kind of a, a different example because it's all in right. one. Yeah. Uh, the ambulance budget has one above 50 and then the wastewater treatment plant. Although again, that's one that I would consider to probably stay as one line. Um, and then, you know, different levels of 25,000 would, would trigger different ones. But um, that was one thought, you know, that, that uh, Ken had previously mentioned, which I, I, I can certainly accomplish as well. Okay. Dan? Yeah, so I, I like the plan of, of setting a limit. I'm not, hmm. again, as, as Ken was saying, my, my concern, and not that I'm thinking that this would necessarily happen, but just because things that I didn't necessarily think would happen have happened at, at times. Um, you know, just if, if you have, uh, not, you know, we're looking at this like we're budget or we were, you know, 90,000 in, in, in professional services, which we know mostly is legal services, right? And say there's $30,000 left, it doesn't get spent on a, on, a, on a study for something, right? Which would technically even fall under professional services. You, you could, you know, and, but it, 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 at least without, you know, sort of a, without the oversight board in town, you know, being, uh, you know, um, in, in involved in that in some way. So I guess, I guess, in theory, that wouldn't be written now, even because it, it it would be still in the same budget. But um, Travis, how many how many budgets is it at twenty five thousand? I didn't do that. I think um, I think we'd probably go more towards like ten. But uh, I can do that count as well. Probably more than than I want. Well, the ten, but that would also that would include wastewater. Sustainability; those two would get would get right. Those those I don't look at is because again, yeah, that, like that's what I'm saying. Like things like, like that. The emergency management budget, I think, has professional service or something, but it's all right. Yeah, it's all black exactly. Black. I think it's only. I think it's that's why I said when we were when we were speaking earlier. I, I said I think it's a small amount. There are only like three budgets where that would be an issue, uh, even at a low threshold of twenty five. I think, and uh, you know, because there aren't many that have big professional services, so. But anyway, I, just from the other members, is, is everybody okay with the simplification of the format? Understanding that, you know, it'll it'll make this change. Go ahead, Ben. I'm fine with it. I mean, told Travis that. I mean, if there's a concern about things being spent differently, we can ask and say, okay, we just want a final accounting before it goes to the auditors at the end of the year, or let's say it in May, we get a idea where the numbers are. And if things are over or on a line item basis, not the summary that we're getting, then we get a sense, okay, this is where it is. And then we can question things. But I don't think from a process standpoint, there's no real reason for us to be involved with ticky tacky things like we've been involved. Cause it's not like we really have much of a debate. It's usually, okay. It, it, yep. Agreed, agreed. And then that, that's exactly, I, I don't think just, just from my perspective, I agree, I, I'm fine with the simpler format. As I said, I was just concerned about, you know, you don't want to create an environment where, um, and again, 90% of what we get is, you know, $600 here, $500 right. there. Getting rid of all that, I'm 100% for. I just don't want to create a situation where somebody sits there and says, oh, you know, now that I don't have to get approval for moving around the buckets, I've got some money at the end of the year, so I'm going to go spend it somewhere else to use it, or I'm going to do something like that when we really want that to be flowing through to free cash if they have underspent. And again, I'm not... Is, I'm not going to have a two hour debate about it because it's, I think it's a minor issue. And I think that with Travis, you know, what I said to Travis was, I trust that if departments try to do stuff like that, that it will get flagged by Sharon, that it will get flagged by him and that they will at least come back to us and say, are you guys okay with this? Because we need to know, you know, not because we have to approve, but because it, it impacts things like free cash, right? If they're, if they're repurposing money. So right. and when the, the money is, you know, and, and so this is the other thing, and, and this is, I mean, from viewing, you know, the, the FinCom's, this is my first time through Holliston's budget and your reviews. And, you know, I, I think you guys look at run rates and things like that a lot. So the biggest thing to me is, you know, everything still gets charged to the full, right, descriptive yeah. lines here. And all of that detail is still available. And so if in a year where you see one of these jump up, and the answer is, you know, essentially we were we were able to do that. We were able to cover something because somewhere else that needs to be caught because it's going to factor into the next year's budget development, even if it's everything something that everybody's on board with. So, I mean, the detail doesn't go away. Okay, Michelle.
I know we're, we're all thinking about the end of the year when we make those little minor adjustments, but before the end of the year, line item adjustments are done only by town meeting. Hit, do we, does anyone remember when a line item adjustment had to be done like at October town meeting? I, I can't remember that. At oh, well, well, depends on what you call it. I mean, not a, not a, there have been transfers at October town meeting. We did a few, you know, we did a whole bunch right in the fall. Right. Um, but I mean, something like those, this, those are not the same types of things though, but yeah. Right. I, because I don't want to take away a po the power of town meeting to make a decision you know what I mean? That this would take away a power of town meeting to make the line item transfer because we're doing this now. Right. What it, what it does at it's, at its very core, what it's really doing is it's saying that if we simp if we if town meeting approves fewer buckets, it just means that what was in a couple of buckets before is now in one bucket, and so right. from the town's perspective, they're free to do whatever they want in that bucket. Right. Once it's in a bucket and approved by town meeting, so and and that. As I said, I, I agree 100% with the simplification. Although I did say to Travis that it keeps confusing me that he's got the, the the titles with the totals that are underneath the budgets, but that's the way it's always been. So just new, you know. But but anyway, my whole point is that it, in a, in a certain sense, right? It's a trade-off between do you want town meeting to go, you know, approve $300 for a phone bill, right? And the answer is no. And but do you also want to just say? Uh, oh, uh, you know, here's a, a number, 68 million. Uh, everybody, you know, go spend what you want, right? And that's, so when you're doing these simplifications, that's what you're essentially doing. You're saying we're simplifying town meetings approval, right? But town meeting in a sense is is allowing by simplifying their, you're, you're, you're giving the town more flexibility, which again, I'm not opposed to, right? Because 90% of what we see in June are these little things that we really shouldn't be caring about anyway, right? right? Um, and, and as I said, the, and, and, I, and I want to emphasize again, I'm not saying that I think there's a big problem, but there are some big numbers in here in some of these buckets. And that was my only concern was some of those big numbers flow through to free cash or really shouldn't be repurposed. None of us care if they, if a communications line, 20 bucks or hundred bucks goes to a phone bill, right? But we would care if a budget had a bucket that was, you know, $50,000 that they really had only spent 40 on that they that was then chosen to be repurposed to something else which was not you know you could argue it was the intent of town meeting because they gave them the approval but but implicit in that intent is we're presenting them a recommendation on our part that assumes the detail Travis is talking about right you don't want yeah. someone to not pay to not have a big phone bill and then buy 20 cartons of copier paper Right, or, or we actually, I wouldn't care as much about that. Right, it's it's more like, as I said, with the purchase services. That's the, that's the, that to me was the the issue. Right, if if you sit there and say we have a big number in purchase services to accomplish for for a contract or something like that, that is a big. You know, if that contract somehow needs to be changed or that contract came in way less, that's when we want to. You know, again, it's not that we have to pass on it, but. The, the reason that I said I want to make sure the communication is there is because, yes, we'll see it when we do the we, the reports, but it's like late bills, right? I always get frustrated with late bills because by the time you you find out about them, the town's obligated to pay and there's really nothing we can do. And it's the same thing. I don't want to find out, you know, three months after somebody repurposed the money in a quarterly report that says, okay, they did this. And we say, hey, why did they do this? We would have, that would have been better to just let it flow through to free cash and deal with, other, you know, that kind of thing. I'm not really that concerned, which is why I said I don't want to have an hour-long debate on this. Well, uh, but I just better, wanted to make that point. That, would you that feel the expectation better contract, is that we hear about deviations. Would you feel better if contract services, if it was personal services, contract services? Well, that, that's what we're talking about, Travis. Is that we're, that for some, the big budgets, we're going to we're going to separate those out, right? For for the for the very the few year, think, or above some threshold. Right. That that's what he's looking at is what how many okay. how many because because obviously if you if you put it back in, you're back to three and you know it's like it, it defeats part of the purpose of simplifying. So that's why I said to Travis, look at thresholds and say if somebody's got, you know, as I said, like sustainability, even though it's fifty thousand dollars, yeah, we don't need that doesn't need to be broken out. That's one because contract. That's right? all there is. Wastewater, that's one contract. We don't have to worry about that. Things like that. It's it's the budgets that have larger numbers in those in those uh, that to cover multiple things so that when something you know, like, again, and I'm not trying to pick on the select board, but the legal one is a good example, right? 
that their big purchase services is legal. So, you know, so, so the issue then becomes, okay, if we don't need that money for legal services, right, and it was meant for legal services, if they don't spend it, that really should go back to free cash and not just be repurposed for something else. And I'm not, again, that's independent of the select board. I'm saying any budget that had that should right. be in that same boat. If there's money for legal and they don't spend it, that is something where I'd say you really shouldn't be repurposing that unless there's a real need, like, you know, you've got, you've got 50 bucks you need in another line. That's different. But, but, but some of these amounts are large enough that they could be repurposed in ways that were clearly not intended in our recommendation or in, in the original budget put forth by the department. Um, yeah, let me look at the threshold. So, I mean, under the 50,000 removing sustainability and wastewater treatment, because they're essentially one that we'd want them to be online. I don't think anybody has a problem with that. Bo uh, The select board and ambulance definitely stand out. So let me see if there's anybody else that's like in between the 25 to 50 range that makes sense. I'll just shoot you the list. I'll, I'll send you a revision and see if people are comfortable um, to address that. Water is is a definite at, at over 100,000. Um, the only other thing I wanted to mention here before I get into, you know, um, budgets uh, <clears throat> is the only thing in this is that I have um, Holliston Public Schools and Keefe as omnibus because that's the way that they're technically done. Now, the, the format that's always been shown is to break it out for more for information purposes. At the end of the day, the statute makes it an omnibus budget. So yeah. this one, I would just rely on on um, Keith Bidet and, and uh, Dr. Kuska. If they give me you know all the detail, I can put it in there. But um, I, I just have it as the, the baseline number right now. But that, that's not – it's just yeah, because – and, and, and to be to be honest, you're, you're exactly correct, right? There is no – there's no legal, in a sense, there's really no legal binding to the num to the to voting it in pieces anyway. Because I always find it funny. I always find it funny we did that because the so 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 I, I'd be fine with just leaving it as a, as the number because we know that statutorily they can do whatever they want with that number. Okay. I thought I saw a hand before I go on. Yes, yeah, so did I, but then it disappeared. It was me, but I was mistaken. I thought we did have it just one number, but. My memory is not going well. Okay. All right. Let me go through. Let me go through quickly the list of things. Uh, and again, I, I gave it to you with the ones that have already been discussed, but just because they're they're the changes. So the select board, what I previously discussed, is uh, a reorg here that that creates an ATA slash HR director position out of um, what was an administrative assistant position. Reclasses this to the office manager to have one administrative support. We end up with uh, the function, and I showed the org chart last time where, you know, we now have a, a sort of dedicated HR function. The ATA, uh, I can share, you know, if anybody's interested, the, the job description. It's a pretty, you know, common one that we see in towns our size, but I think it, it'll really um, tie a lot of things together, give us, you know, another sort of project manager, which has been a significant amount of my time. Um, and then I, I did lessen as much as I could the professional services. This was previously 98. Um and I lowered it 8,800, um, thinking that, you know, we rely, Mary and I rely pretty heavily on Labor Council for some things that, quite frankly, can be done by an HR professional, um, somebody with an HR background in that role. So I feel comfortable doing that. Potentially could be could be more in the future, but I would I'd want to give them, you know, sort of something to, to work with uh, in the fiscal year. Um, let me just skip based on the list that I had given you all. I can obviously return to anything that there's questions on the clerk. This was the position that we previously discussed. That's currently being hired. This also sort of backfills some of the support hours in the, the town administrator office by giving up the, the two de dedicated admin staff. Um, and, you know, hopefully we'll have somebody in that role. Um, PD is the one that was just voted on Tuesday night. I think it's a vacation week. So the 26th police officer has been removed here. The bottom line changed slightly. Um, I think it gets us sort of everything um, that, uh, you know, I, I think the chief highlighted a number of items that had got a little wonky, so to speak, during FY21 as we were using some balances from 20 to make things work during COVID. We get back to sort of the level service budget in PD. Um, but the 26 police officer has been removed. I will mention, uh, as it is, it is a priority of mine. As I shared that with the the police chief, it is a priority of the select board that we will continue to to push for the 26 police officer in the future. But uh, full recognition that the FY22 budget is uh, it's just not the right time to have that conversation. Um, so this one was revoted. This bottom line here. Um, I talked with you about this one previously. DPW Highway. $10,000 was added here in red. 
That is the idea that we pulled the sweeper off the capital list. The capital subcommittee met yesterday. Um, ben Murphy held a 10-minute, you know, I think he's beaten Tim in terms of amount of time of capital subcommittee meetings. Um, so we, we covered uh, that, that list. Removed from that list was the, the street sweeper. We're going to try out this, this process of using the, the outsourced um, uh, contracting work. We, we got the con we got the um, the rates of pay through the state. We've gone through the process. We think we you know we can sort of see how this works. We've got some feedback already from the residents. So I mean we're going to be able to put together an analysis of if it's working. Ten thousand dollars does not represent the total cost, but it it is sort of the net of what we think would probably be based on the hours and the rate of pay about fifteen to nineteen thousand dollars per year offsetting by a substantial amount of maintenance that we were putting into a street sweeper, whether it's new or old, when it's old, you put a lot into it. Um, so $10,000 was added to this. I think, you know, we got into it last time, but I can get into it again. That was voted by the select board on. Hang on a second. Now. Dan, do you have a question about this? Yeah, just, just to clarify, it, the street sweeper was taken off of the, the May request, but not off of the capital plan, right? And for That's correct. October. I moved it. I moved it to October until we have the full discussion. But you, you just said take off, so I just want to make sure there wasn't a change. In, in That's the correct. Plans. Okay. Correct. Um, and I can pull that capital list up. So we, all it did really was shift, and then we shifted up the, the truck that was scheduled for October. We swapped. Yeah, no, no, I just want to, because I do think it's important to see how this goes before we plan on, before we decide take to get on the list. Yeah. Agreed. Okay, so that was DPW facilities. I think you'd already seen a while back, because we did this in March, but... We had originally put in here the two times a day high touch cleaning um, within the CARES Act. The select board voted the projection of that cost through the end of the calendar year. My hope would be, uh, you know, at the very least, we're if we're scaling it back, if not removing that added service level. Um, so it's been removed from here and it will be continued to pay through the CARES Act for all municipal buildings. Um, I think I briefly discussed last week the changes to the wastewater. We had lost, as as James Keast and I were putting together the budget for the wastewater treatment plant, we were notified by the contractor who services that facility that they weren't, quote, unquote, making enough money off of us. I should say, quote, not making enough money off of us, end quote. Um, and so they sort of, they, they initiated the 90-day opt-out of their contract. So we got a little concerned. We asked them essentially what they think would be that amount. It was 75000 We plugged that in. Um, and then, you know, we put it out there. They did give us um, an information. You know, they, they gave us essentially what they would do for a contract. We also got responses from two others uh, working with council. That should be under contract relatively soon and um, dropping this back down to 66,000, uh, which was the previous number. Although, the, you know, there's some maintenance identified in there. So the net of these two was 7,000 less than the last time I presented this to you. Um and I will come back to you once the you know the contract is all settled, so you, you you're comfortable with uh, where we ended up going. Then uh, 34 is Board of Health and 39 is Parks and Rec. But I will go to 44, which is so. This is the liability. I think I briefly mentioned this to you last week as well. This was not welcome news, um, and it's possible, quite frankly, if I had got this news previously, that we would have left Maya. Um, it's too late in the game now. I, I understand their perspective. We had a large loss ratio. I've looked at it again. I mean, it's it's been a lot, um, but now at this point, when we go out to market, going looking ahead to 23, we're just going to get better offers than what Maya is going to be. So I would anticipate that this might be our last year with Maya. Although, when they know that, maybe they come in um, and we see a substantial turnaround going into 23. You know, especially if our loss ratio uh, goes down. But um, so those were the main changes I wanted to make sure everybody was aware of. Um, and uh, I can get into Board of Health and Parks and Rec when the chair's ready. Okay. Um, well, I would say uh, do that now because uh, once we get into that, we must be start voting. And, and assessors, right? I don't well, have any well, assessors. Well, we're going to vote them line by line. So when we get to each, you know, the, the assessors. I don't know if Travis has anything about the assessors. I think you have. Oh, Travis, I thought you had. A, you were going to go over your thoughts on their their request. I can do that. Um, I, I'm I, just asking for your. your not, I'm not asking for your. You know, your decision. You know, the decision from you. Just your sort of thoughts on it. Please. Yeah, I can weigh in on that one. Well, um, well, right. What I would suggest is I want I want him to, for now, stick to the changes to what he gave us earlier, and the changes he would suggest making to the budgets we got. 
And then when, as we go through the voting, we can talk about each individual budget when we get to it. I just don't want to confuse the issue. At the pleasure of the chair. Okay. All right, so Board of Health, uh, this was the request. Um, they gave you some backup on it. Um, what they're trying to do is really accomplish more hours as some of it's COVID related, a lot of it's COVID related. Um, but you know, as you know, it's a request that's come up previously. So this is a request uh, to go from a 21 and an 18 hour uh, to support staff, one benefit of one not to two um, 30 hour positions, if I remember correctly. Um, I had a conversation with a number of people in what I call the land use departments downstairs, which is Board of Health, not always what I consider Board of Health as part of land use in a town that is fully septic. That is a significant amount of what a Board of Health does in a, in a town with septic. Um, and so I, I think that they're, I would classify them as part of land use. So Board of Health, Building Inspector, uh, planning board, conservation, uh, ZBA, you know, essentially the downstairs of town hall with the exception of Sharon over in accounting. Um, and so I, I sort of touched base with everybody down there and the chair of the board of health um, and, and tried to get a sense of, of if we could come up with a scenario that was not quite as, as costly as this one um, that gets, you know, generally speaking uh, to what they need, which is, is more support uh, to get through this, this period of time. So, the conversation that I had with them, so if you look at it this way, is, is what I described as land use. Um, these are the department heads, all on the M schedule, the town planner, the conservation agent, building commissioner, health inspector and agent. Um, you know, the conservation agent and building commissioner report to me, um, town planner to the planning board, health inspector agent to the board of health. So what they have right now, the building commissioner has one full-time Principal clerk, the Board of Health, as I mentioned, has the one that is 21 hours and the one that is 18 hours. They each have per event uh, inspectors. These are paid in uh, under Board of Health in blue out of the actual budget. These are paid under Building Commissioner in blue out of um, their revolving fund, um, which I'll get into in a moment. This is um, essentially what I discussed <clears throat> with them. Um, it does do a couple things that uh, I think, you know, everybody needs to be on the same page with as it relates to adding a benefited position. Um, it also has a number of moving components uh, that I want everybody to be aware of and, and comfortable with if this is the path we go. So this position does bump up slightly, um, although not to the 30 hours that was requested. Um, it bumps up slightly, but then anything above this position could be uh, paid for um, out of sort of one-time monies because it would be in some way related to COVID, right? So the position was already benefited. We can run it up as needed if the position, you know, as uh, assuming the person is available. Um, this adds more hours under the tax supported. Um, anything above this to up to 30 hours or maybe even 35 per week as needed um, would then rely on CARES or future ARPA funding. Um, this position is the one that would change it would add hours directly under and, and dedicated hours on a weekly basis under the principal clerk of the building commissioner. So the building commissioner um, is new obviously. And, and, you know, I think identified early, but was not prepared to make a, you know, the request during his budget conversation, which was there is one dedicated admin staff. There are two uh, inspectors that, that come and go that, that are the ones who are sort of event-based. And then there's the, the building commissioner himself um, I think there was previously a different breakdown that, that had a higher head count. Um, I don't think adding uh, a part-time person makes sense, um, even if it was an 18-hour position. One of the things that we're looking for is really somebody who can cross-train down there, learn their system, the people GIS system, and input permit information that comes in over the phone. We've had a lot of um, people trying to say, look, you know, I'm not being able to get through we had to open up downstairs because we had people standing at the back door at the sign that says you have to have an appointment calling, couldn't get, a, a, couldn't get through to say, I'm at the back door, go home. You know, people were getting a little upset. We've tried to address that as much as possible by supporting them through my office and others. Um, but it, you know, look, we need, we need a little more support there. I think this would give them a dedicated person, um, somebody who can cross train uh, downstairs to do work under the, the board of health, but also the building inspector. So getting into that just a little bit, first of all, th there is an administrative aspect to that. I won't, you know, there's, you're looking at somebody who now reports to 
the Board of Health overseeing department and a town administrator building commissioner overseeing department, right? There's cross there. Um, I think we looked at it a little bit with the, the floater position in the town clerk, the town administrator office that we, we spoke about. So it's not, you know, this is something that I'm aware is, is going to require a little bit of getting used to. Um, when it comes down to the finances of it, this is the breakout of what I'm, I'm sort of put together and discussed with the Board of Health chair um, and the department heads. The Board of Health person does increase from 21 to 24 hours, and that's a cost to the bottom line of the tax-supported budget. Additional hours above that would be CARES or ARPA dependent. The Board of Health uh, principal clerk position would essentially be disbanded and need to be reposted because it is a different position. They're aware of that. I made that very clear. Um, that position would be posted in the 30 hour range, although the breakout would be a little bit different. Again, any hours above that range that it was posted at would be CARES and ARPA dependent. The breakdown of hours would be essentially along these lines, which is the 24 hours dedicated to the Board of Health. That's what they're looking for is an increase in, in hours. And then anything above that would be CARES and ARPA dependent. Um, and then a, a primary, or excuse me, a secondary position, which would include hourly, excuse me, weekly hours to the building department, allow for the cross training I mentioned for using their system. Um, but those funds would be, would fall under the revolving fund. Um, I spoke a little bit with the chair about whether or not we're comfortable with that. I am, but I understand. And, and you know, I think I, I fully appreciate the fact that if this were something that were consistent and we felt like was not tied to specifically to the revenue of the revolving fund, could potentially find its way into the tax supported budget again in the future. Um, at the same point, based on the balance of that fund, the fact that I think that, you know, keeping essentially that department rolling right now with what has been a substantial workflow, I think is tied to the revenue and I'd be, I'd be okay in FY22 specifically and potentially moving forward, rolling it directly to the revolving fund. Um, and so this is kind of the breakout. This is what it would have been um, with no change. This is what it, um, this is what it looks like um, in this new scenario, and then this is this is the the impact of the tax supported is twelve thousand rather than the twenty some odd we looked at on the budget, and then this essentially is an impact of the revolving fund. So it is still being paid out, but it is not being paid out of the tax levy. And I will stop there. Okay, so uh, and that's it. So now we've got everything now now in the budget that you have and the budget you sent out did you reflect this no or not i i reflected what was originally requested of you i have okay. not made any so so, so if this is implemented what is the board of health number changed to um let me pull it just up. was on your sheet i just didn't write it down yeah i don't know if my calculator pulls up on your screen if you're watching my calculation or not but uh my judy's 10 key um I just want to make note of that number. So this request in yellow, the 82,000, would go down by 11,883. So what would the new number be? I'm just trying to find the... It would be 70,677. No, okay, one second. Oh, there it is, Board of Health. Okay. No, I'm just thinking the, total, the overall budget amount. What do oh, we... I'm sorry. 173,229. So, so, 170, so the Board of Health overall budget would go down to 173,229, which is about the $7,000 less than what they asked for, yeah. Okay, a little more than that, actually. Um, okay, because here's what I would suggest. Well, first, let me get the question. So, uh, uh, Dan, you were first, so go ahead. Yeah, so, um, First of all, what I, want, what I wanted to say is, you know, obviously the uh, the Board of Health is an, is an independent board, not subject to sort of, you know, purview of the uh, of being the, with the budget being approved by the, the select board or even going through the town administrator's office other than taking pilot. But in this case, I think, you know, we, we asked Travis to take a look at this because as the chief personnel officer of the town with all the significant um, requests that were coming in, you know, to come up with a, with a solution that would make sense and then present it to the board. And I think, Travis, you alluded to it, the the chair of the Board of Health has sort of verbally at least sort of said that this would, would work for them, right? Meet their needs, yeah. Meet their needs. So so I, I'm just just trying to be careful. We, we've been I'm very cognizant of the independence of the board and, and the fact that, you know, this is not something that, um, you know, we want to make sure that it's, it's their budget 
um, that's at least being requested of us. But then at the same time, you know, in our diligence and, and sort of our oversight, we're trying to sort of um, you know, bring in the chief um, personnel officer to come up with what works best for the for the town as a whole and, and, and utilizes the taxpayers' dollars um, as effectively and efficiently as possible. So I think that this plan makes a lot of sense, and, and uh, you know, ho hopefully. Um, I, I really appreciate the, the the work that Travis did, and also the the uh, flexibility of the board of health show. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's a good idea. Um, is both of them increasing the benefits, or is it just one of them increasing the? And the, with the revolving fund, the permit fees, is is that going to create any problems long term? Having it come out of the revolving fund, I know you mentioned it. Is there a way to split up the fees so it's we know a certain portion of the earmark to the well, frank, frankly then i'd rather just take it and put it in the billing well, part of budget yeah okay and i was going to suggest that right because because with the with the if we if we given that the board of health now again to dan's point right if we vote a recommendation that's different than what they requested um you know michelle i think you're the liaison to board of health right so can you take it back there and make sure they're okay with that and either have them revote it or just, you know, it sounds like Travis has already done that, gotten there, they're okay with the, the changes that he's made to the org that they requested. Um, but but that's going to save, you know, seven, that's why I wanted to know the new number. That saves like seven, eight. And we put that into the building department budget. The, I just do it now, put it in the budget. That only reduces the bottom line by, you know, by about 1500 or Two thousand dollars or something like that, which I think is something I'd, ra I'd rather do it that way. Personally, again, the committee can decide what they want, but I just think it, I'd rather do it that way because, as I mentioned before, right, it's not directly tied to the permit revenue. So I'd prefer to just put it in the building department budget outright. Wait, doesn't it reduce it more than six? I thought the whole savings was sixteen thousand because you you saved the, the hours were, were the same, weren't they? Weren't they, Travis? But some of them are now going over to the building department and theoretically the revolving fund um, from the health. Yeah, so there were there was a request to go from 21 and 18 to 30 and 30. So that has been scaled back. So there are savings in that regard. Um, it essentially goes to, uh, in this scenario to to 30 and 24 rather than 30 and 30. So there's there's that's the delta that right. actually saves from the bottom line. Anything above that, again, ARPA uh, yeah. cares. Yeah. Um, and the um the the impact to saying you know keep it in the budget and and i think one of the reasons in the difference that we're talking about is the original request from board of health did not include two percent uh, did not include the cola and i am including the cola now okay thank you could we go back to that screen is this did you email this to us um i've emailed this to uh the chairs of the boards i can email it to the whole group if, yeah, if you can send it to me so I have it before I call the Board of Health. Sure. I, and I did, um, just to the Chair's point, I, I had a direct conversation um, with Ms. Nolan. I did not have a, a full sit down with the Board of Health, and I can certainly do that. Um, I think, uh, you know, I, and obviously the department heads as well and, and the staff that, that would be impacted. Okay. If, if you're going to talk to the Board of Health, I'd like to be there during that meeting, although they meet on Tuesdays, don't they? Yeah, I'll just uh, uh, we can sort of uh, I can start an email and if and if they need me in person, I can do that. Um, I okay, if you can copy me on it. Sure, absolutely. So Thank we you. can't even vote on this until they vote on it, correct, Ken? No, no, we can vote a recommendation on anything, regardless. But obviously, uh, you know, I, the only reason I'm saying this is given the time. Yeah. If you want to, with you want, if if they're going to meet next Tuesday, then yeah, we can hold off on the Board of Health budget till next Tuesday. Well, the but, thing is. Uh, under Mass General Law, Board of Health is is in charge of their own personnel, but they're not in charge of the funding for their personnel. Right. So, 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 so that that's why I said I'm fine either way. If we want to wait till if they're meeting Tuesday, I didn't know when they were meeting next. If they're meeting Tuesday, then I'm fine with withholding our vote tonight and waiting till Tuesday, giving them a chance know. to review and approve. They meet on Tuesdays. I don't know if they're meeting next Tuesday, though. I can take a look in a sec. So just to um, the revolving account, this is the balance. And as you can see, you know, it has been growing. And that's, I mean, I'm, I'm not looking at it in a vacuum. I think, you know, the way oh, that we I, I think it can support it, Travis. I don't think yeah. there's a question that it can support it. 
but but I'm just saying that you know since since it isn't as I said directly tied to permit revenue like the expenses are right now, the you know I I would personally be fine. I don't know what the committee prefers. I'd be fine putting it in. The net to the bottom line is just a couple of thousand, and then this way it's it's not an issue that we have to deal with you know in future years. Okay, I just uh, got an email or I just got a text from Chris. They're not meeting. Um... They're not meeting next Tuesday. What I can do is send you my correspondence um, with their chair that, that okay. this idea they liked and supported. Um, so you have that. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, just as between now and Tuesday, if we get some confirmation from their, them that they're okay with it or from the chair that, that they're okay with us uh, moving forward with that. Travis has that, so I'm comfortable voting it tonight and, and just informing them and, and then giving them the opportunity to come to our meeting next Tuesday if they have any objection. Okay, that, that's that's fine too. As I said, I just don't want to, you know, I want to give them a chance. To, it, as I said, I'm fine with Travis, you know, knowing Travis talked to them as well. Go ahead, Ben. Yeah, what's the process of um, pulling out money from the revolving funds? I mean, when they're growing like this, I would think at some point you sweep it into the general. Up. We sweep them every few years. You typically, like every three or four years, when they build up, we we sweep that into the general fund. That's what has been our tradition. I don't know what Travis is thinking, but yeah, there's a couple of ways to do it. One, one is, um, you know, we just set up a, a system across the board where we look at um, a sort of indirect cost analysis of the amount of time that that general fund supported staff like Sharon, myself, uh, the building inspector, put into it, um, and set up, you know, a sort of mechanism to to charge it on a on an annual basis. Then we can build it in. Rather than have it periodic, either way is is generally accepted. Um, all right, let me just flip really quickly, and then I'll be done, and, and you can ask, and then I'll get out of the way. Parks, uh, I did have a conversation with Mark. Um, this request, I again, I fully support. I think we need to be building um, buildings and ground maintenance into their pet tax supported budget. That is uh, unequivocally my opinion moving forward. I will say, you know, depending on where the finance committee is, I discussed with Mark. You know, ARPA is very specific, has some language in terms of what they will tell us, um, that, uh, you know, lost revenue is something that clearly falls within the wheelhouse of ARPA. Uh, he put together, Mark Frank put together, you know, an excellent analysis that I think falls within the parameters of what ARPA is looking for to make sure that it's, you know, uh, that we could essentially put the revolving fund back in good stead through ARPA that alleviates a lot of the concern that led to this request. Um, so I would be comfortable with the idea that 22 does not need to have it if that's, you know, sort of where the, um, the finance committee is coming down on it. But I, again, I would say, I think, I think it belongs here in some regards in the long run, but in 22 specifically, ARPA sort of solves the issue, uh, in the short term. And that's all I have. Okay. Do you yeah, want I'm me to stop sharing and you can take over? Do you want me to just, do um, yeah, that's fine. Okay. I do yeah. have a question though. What are they thinking of using for that? using for buildings and grounds it's just the fields and things like that or yeah so we've had a number of discussions mark frank sean reese and myself in the long-term sort of buildings and grounds aspect of parks whether it's parks you know sort of the long-term planning of, of trail maintenance outside of the scope of those that excellent group um and you know there there's some there's some thought that eventually the the end game is going to end up having to be sort of an increased head count most likely under dpw specific to grounds maintenance certainly was not prepared to be be offering that up in fy22 um this was the idea of there's a number of contracted work that they do they pay for all through the revolving fund some of which has zero to do with the uh, revenue that they bring in through parks right it's opening fields that are not being used for their programs and so he literally took the bills took out what was not sort of program specific and said here's the tax supported aspect and came up with 97. that was the the process that we went through Okay. If, if I'm going to opine as a former liaison, I would say I would agree. And they have a revolving fund for their purposes, all the different things, and they do a lot of programs. So if it's certain things like all the diff stuff down at Potomac and things like that, they were down there. That's, I would suggest carving it out. That's my opinion. Okay. Okay, so um, so what I'm sharing now is our version of where things are, and you see the requests. You have to blow right? that up, Ken. Yeah, we're blind. See. <laughs> okay, uh, let me figure out. I got to remember how to blow up just the font. You just go down and make it 100. percent 
I, I can see a perfect. Oh, you mean you just want to blow it up, blow it up like this? Okay. I think so. Okay. But you're not Almost. old, and your eyes are fine. So. Yeah, you're 20 years younger than us, right? <laughs> I, I, well, I wish. Least certainly. Yeah. Um, okay. So so let me explain where we are here. Um, the recommend, as I said, the recommended column. This is for today. That is just Travis's recommended budget. Okay which we obviously concur with on almost everything, but the, uh, uh, the requested column is what we actually reviewed, the numbers that were requested, okay? Um, and if you look, there's a delta at the bottom, right? Um, and actually I'm missing, hold on, I gotta put this in here. Uh, this is two, I forgot to put, oh, hold it, hold it, uh, 721, just to make sure it's accurate here. Okay, because you should have the same, yes. And, and you're wondering about the dollar. This is just a, a foible in the spreadsheet where I have to put a dollar in there or, or it uses a wrong number. I have to talk to Ben about fixing that. But anyway, if you if you adjust all of this, right, and you look at the requests, the the effectively this delta here, for the most part, right, we discussed a few changes that were made. There are two, there are a couple of things in it. One is that the request didn't have the COLA, okay? So they, they went up because of that. Um, but then Travis uh, brought the capital appropriation from 2 million, what we had targeted to 1.75, okay? So if you put the two together, that, that's basically why you see about a $200,000 difference there. Um, plus there's a little bit of savings, you know, the other things, the deltas he just talked about. So um, we have a bunch of budgets I think we all agree on because for the, aside from the exceptions Travis listed, the differences between requested and recommended are just the COLA. So I, we went through the, we went through a small I'm sorry, I'm just gonna ask, so we don't go into the town meeting having a discussion and somebody points out that we have a surplus and then regarding the stipends, is there a way we can adjust the revenue to make sure we don't have a surplus? Well, well, there's, you know, I wouldn't say adjust the revenue. I mean, the thing is that we could, Go if we went back on target on capital, we definitely wouldn't have a surplus. Right? Wow. <laughs> so, it's fifty-seven thousand dollars. I would also point right, out, but fifty-seven thousand is noise at this le at this point in time, right? Without a final budget, and also, you know, just been uh, what I would say, and and I tried to make it as clear as possible because I I had some questions on it. When I when I had a a bottom line that was a plus minus, it was compared to the levy limit, right? Taxing to the levy limit. I mean. It, so certainly, you know, anything would essentially back off the levy, which is, um, but yeah, I think it is rounding to, to Ken's point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, the, the one thing I will point out for anybody who watches this, right? One of the concerns that I have, just me, this is not the finance committee, is in prior years, we have striven to leave a lot more on the bottom line. And I don't mean a lot more like millions. I'm saying like in the hundreds of thousands, hundred to two hundred thousand dollar range, for two reasons. One is the the numbers aren't final and won't be till after we go to town meeting. The second thing is that uh, we this is built on a maximum levy approach, right? So so to the extent that our bottom line is positive, that's and it and it ends up being that way when the numbers kind of finalize. That just means that's that much less money that we need to raise via the levy. So, you know, I, I think that it's all too often that people look at something like this and they say, oh, we've got money. And it's like, we've got money because we are taxing at the maximum we can. And that really shouldn't be the way we do things. And, we, and as a committee, we've tried not to, right? We try to look at what the needs are and make sure we're meeting them. Um, and obviously there's a limited pie, but, but just to that point, I, I think it's very important for the public to understand that a surplus, you know, a, a positive number on the bottom uh, just means you're being taxed as much as you possibly can minus that amount. Right. So. This is, we're not a business where we're selling widgets and that our revenue is, is how many widgets we're selling. The revenue is mostly taxpayer dollars. So pretty much everything we're spending here is, is, is taxpayer dollars. So yeah. we just want to keep that in mind. Yeah. So when you have nope. to to I totally agree. It was just because yeah. if you recall, back in July, one of the comments when we talked about the assessors, Yes. Stipends was hey you got a surplus, blah blah blah. So yeah, yeah but I definitely don't point out saying this is just going to come. People are going to get taxed more. I, it's I important to sorry Dan, but it yeah. is important at town meeting Ken 
to cover this exactly how you just described it or how Dan just described it, because the taxpayers in town are being taxed to the maximum. Right. Yep. And I think that's really important that everybody understands. Yeah, I've mentioned that before, but I, I haven't in recent years. So obviously last year was a kind of a different year. So but I, I, wanted to, say, I think that make sure I include it this year. That, that tinkering with the with the revenue assumptions should never be done. Yeah. Um, so, Michelle, you had your hand up. You're on mute, Michelle. I, I think it's important to remember that um, some of the CARES money is going to rent and mortgage assistance. That schools are providing free lunches to students. They're providing lunches to families who can't afford meals that people in this town are still hurting. Not everyone is back at work full time. And now is not the time to be talking about um, taxing people to the full extent that we were able to tax them. That is my opinion. Okay, so, so, so to that end, right, to that end, um, the reason I'm going over all this is because I think that if, if you understand, as I said, there are a couple of budgets we may want to have debate about. I think a lot of these these deltas are in line with the requests. Uh, obviously, if people have questions about them, we'll go through them line by line. But I'm just saying, I'm trying to head off the, why did this number change from our request? And, and by saying that in most cases, it's just the, the COLA, and the ones that, except for the ones that Travis mentioned. Now, I did, I did note down here, the Board of Health, the new number. Now, Travis, could you figure out the number for the building department if we move that into the budget while we're while we're doing these other ones okay um, because that from my perspective I think those are the only two that changed numbers the the, the, the change for the police was the was the removal of the 26th officer um, and then there were a couple of other minor things like the benefit you know remember Travis mentioned that there was a benefit uh, you know, some uh, savings to put in there but if everybody's comfortable with that then I'm fine with even though it says recommended, I'm fine with this being our recommendation, what Travis has suggested. If, uh, um, I hit you know, and I know there are a couple that people may want to debate, but for the most part, I'm fine with those because they do match the requests and they do just reflect the COLA difference. So, so if that's the case, then I would suggest we start voting and uh, we'll just go right down the list. And, and obviously the motion would be to recommend the amount in yellow for each department on the left and, um, uh, and then once the motion is seconded, we'll we'll have any debate necessary on the number. So, so the number that I had that would have um, in this scenario gone to the building department's revolving fund was ten thousand three nineteen. That's based on seven and a half hours a week. <clears throat> ten three nineteen. So that would be um, just. You're working in Excel. You could do it in there. I know, I know. I was just going to do that, but it's usually three degrees from MIT. Come on. What was that? Was number Travis 10 319? Um, I'm sorry, uh, 10 319. Okay, so 168079. You can double check me, Travis. Okay, that's what that would want to be if we did that. Okay. So if everybody's ready, let's uh, try to go through this because I want to try to get, and again, if there's, if we get into a big debate, big controversy, we can defer it till Tuesday, but I want to try to get through as many as we can tonight to lessen the load for next Tuesday. I just scroll over so we can see the department. Yeah, I don't know. I did that because I did the stupid number thing. So I got to find the scroll bar with like, you know, it's kind of stuck. Hold on a second. Where the hell did the scroll bar go? Okay, hold on one second. Let me do this. Move your cursor. That's all. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah. I could do it that way. Good point. Good point. Okay. <sighs> but I'm just wondering why I don't get a scroll bar. That's kind of annoying. So anyway. Probably there. You just can't see it. Yeah, it's it's minimized in the lower right-hand corner between the two arrows. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, let me drag it to the left. Yes, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so let's do that just so I have my scroll bar. Okay. So uh, who wants to take the role of making the motions and who wants to take the role of seconding them? I'll take the role of making a motion. I make a motion to approve the select board's to recommend. The motion to should recommend, be to recommend the, the, the dollar amount for the select board for FY22. I make a motion to recommend the $453,615 
budget for the select board's budget. Fifteen. That, second. Was that correct, okay. Ken? Did I do it correctly? Four fifty-three, six fifteen, and Travis, you can be following along and telling me if we get a number wrong here that that should be changed that I don't have right. So, uh, okay. Uh, any further discussion on that budget? Okay, hearing none. Now remember, we're going to have to do a bunch of roll calls, so no, we'll try to do. We'll have to do these quickly, unless you know. And now that I think about it. Let's amend that motion. Okay. Uh, give a whole bunch of them at once, and then we we'll do okay. one roll call. Given that we have to do roll calls. Okay. Can we can we leave the assessors out? Okay. I was to say which ones, which who. We'll go one by one. Name a budget if there are, if any that you want to discuss. So, Michelle. Um, well, we want to discuss the Board of Assessors. Well, just, yeah, that's fine. But that's fine, but Dan's going to say that one, so yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, so anybody else have any other budgets they, they wanted? We're not going to do schools, right? Are, are we doing schools? Uh, we Yeah, we can do the schools because that's their, that's their request right now. If they come to us with a change, we'll discuss it. No, oh, actually, don't want to. Okay, so any others other than the assessors? Well, we probably should, forever hold your peace. We should probably talk about parks based on the two alternatives that Travis laid out. And buildings, given the, the two alternatives. Yeah. Okay. So parks, building, uh, let's see where's parks. And do we want to then wait for Board of Health too and discuss building and Board of Health together? I'm going to do this differently. Parts. No, no, the only issue with buildings is, is whether we do revolving, at least for me, is whether we do revolving fund or, or tax supported. Right. Okay. So, so we have parks, building, uh, parks, board of assessors. What else? That's it. Just those two. Okay. Then, Vin, do everything except those two. Hey, I'd like to make a motion that the finance committee recommend the following budgets for approval with town meeting. The select board's budget, 453,615. Finance committee, 1,525. Reserve fund, 325,000. Town accountant, 180,125. Town accountant, I'm sorry. Board, treasurer collector, sorry, I'm just trying to read. Four hundred and. Can you move your cursor? Oh, sorry. 427,241. Technology, 294,421. Sorry, is that technology? I'm yeah, and by the way, I, I just, why, I know you're in the middle of the motion, but I just want to ask one question. Is everybody fine? What do you guys want to do about the building inspector and the Board of Health? Are we going to vote? Right, let's, just, okay, let's just stop here. We'll finish this one, and, and then I'll start. Okay, okay. I'll put these two on the list then. Go ahead. Keep going, Vin. So, do I am I stopping or am I going? No, go, go, go. Okay, just skip those two. All right, skip uh, the ones that have orange in the highlight there. Okay, town clerk, one hundred seventy thousand seven sixty eight. Elections, fourteen thousand five thirty four. Conservation commission, fifty five thousand five eighteen. Planning board, one hundred five five hundred ninety nine. Zoning board of appeals, eleven thousand oh fifty five. Economic development, 14,067. Public building, zero. Sustainability, 50,000. Police, 3,204,926. Auxiliary police, 13,902. Fire department, 948, 749. Ambulance, 587, 84. Emergency management, 22,589. Animal control, 38,000. Schools, 37,098,523. Keith Tech, 1,421,995. DPW Highway, 1,472,392. Facilities, 274,885. DPW Snow and Ice, 250. Street lighting, 677,470. Solid waste, 1,318,183. Wastewater treatment, 97,700. DPW motor vehicle fuels, 105. For uh, Council of Aging, 268. And read the whole number. Yeah, for, for motor vehicle fuels, 105,000. Sorry, 105,000. And snow and ice, 250,000. 250,000 snow and ice. Youth and family services, 
sorry, uh, 161,530. Franklin Services, 994,433. Library, 527,808. But you know, the school the library, I have to recuse myself from that budget. Mm -hmm. Okay, so okay. strike that one from the motion. Real Trail, 1,000. Celebrations, 2,000. Debt service, 2,405,138. Need the Parks Commission. What? You missed the Parks Commission. No, I, I we were skipping that on purpose. Go ahead. Yeah. Come on. Oh, I'll just yeah. crawl up here. 2,375,731. Workman's Comp, 311,589. Unemployment, 100,000. Employee benefits, 7,731,489. 499. 499. Didn't I say that? No. Hey, Dan, you can do it. Library, sorry, <laughs> liability insurance, 320,291. Last but not least, DPW Waste Water Department, 2,513,721. I'll second that motion. Okay. And yeah, and just remember, Vin, you brought this on yourself. You volunteered to read it. I know. So, so if I could, okay. I just have a comment. Mm -hmm. um, on, on the ambulance and fire department budgets, there was a sort of a, a lot of conversation, and, and, and I bring this up during the motion because I don't want to change anything, um, but I just do want to go on the record that um, I, I think that some more work needs to be done, uh, you know, in this general area. I think that, you know, we've tried to, we've adjusted the ambulance budget uh, or all the, the, the fire department and ambulance budgets a number of times to try to, you know, increase sort of responsiveness and, and you know, to make sure things work in the ambulance is the most recent. Um, and yet it keeps coming back. So I think that, you know, not to try to be said getting my you know doing my toe into policy but um it, we should definitely come up with sort of a spend a little more time than i think the the week or so that was spent uh trying to come up with this solution um going forward so i, I just you know want to make that comment and and you know we'll see hopefully this, we'll see if this works but there, there may be more to, to be done there i uh, second the motion yeah, well, Dan already seconded it, so oh, we're good. Good. Um, so yeah. there was a bigger conversation at the select board second or, or third select board meeting about the the fire and ambulance budgets, and I am under the impression, and Travis, correct me if I'm wrong, but that is the general direction that the select board has given the chief is to sit down to work towards a more sustainable future, and I think they even talked about bringing in a um, – consult to to help with that future direction i understand but it was sort of like the budget was you know the chief initial initial budget not presented to us but the initial budget was very, very flat and then yep. you know constituent raised some concerns and the chief had had them listed as, as potential issues in his budget so it wasn't like he was missing anything but then within a week sort of you know the, the budget blew by by a hundred thousand and and you know just I recognize the issues and they're real and, and you know, they need to be paid attention to. I just, I think that I want to make sure that that happens because I think that more, more than a week's or so worth of thought should be good. I mean, you know, it's a lot of money to kind of, that's, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah no, I totally agree with you. There was just a, there was good public feedback about the level of service, which, which created that um, change. Yeah, and so I would just point out what was requested was sort of how how to get to X level of service. The chief brought that back, and again, in in his budget presentation, he did say a level of service budget leaves out these things, um, which were addressed. And then you know, so he sort of did have that ready to go, and and brought it back um, again, you know, in a short period of time. And then what was discussed at Tim's point was um, you know having a, a holistic study of our fire and EMS services. Um, right now, I think by putting these in, we'll be able to evaluate if it changes um, the service level to the intent that we're looking for um, in terms of responsiveness, having people on site. Um, but then, you know, the next stage, uh, and I did get a quote from MRI, which is a group that does the majority of public safety um, consulting work in Massachusetts. Uh, a cost for a full audit of our fire and EMS will be in the range of 25000 to 30000 I know everybody loves studies <laughs> on this group. Um, and so as we move into October, um, especially, you know, depending on where our finances are, I would see that as a, as a potential scenario to come in. Um, and then, so the other discussion that we had was that being run through my office, not that the chief can't oversee that, but just to have a sort of uh, bird's eye view outside of the department, outside looking in. Um, and, uh, you know, that would be the timeline on that. 
yeah, this, this is a study that I, I mean, definitely would be very supportive of. Um, but again, I, I just I, I'm so, I'm supportive of the, of the request. I just wanted to, to to raise it up and get it on the, the record. That was all my intent was. Okay, Ben. Uh, yeah, I, I can't see the order by the way, just because I'm sharing. So if I go out of order, I apologize. It's fine. Question: Are we charging enough for the inspections fees now that we're going to be adding an inspector? something to look at and to make sure we're covering our costs now that we have we're going to be adding an inspector as opposed to the chief wearing multiple hats you can take a look at the the last time they were touched yep okay tim just a point of clarification my wife just told me my son probably got a job as one of the seasonal employees down at the waterfront which budget does that come out of that's parks, park. so, so yeah. you're good. Okay. That's, that's not the even revolving. a budget, though. That's a revolving account. It's the revolving, that's revolving too, so, my, yeah. my daughter is as well, so, um, but it's revolving, so we don't we don't cover that. Okay. Okay, so is everybody good now with those budgets? I think we should make Vin read them again. No, just kidding. <laughs> okay. Please don't. Okay, so if that's the case, I will take a vote to approve all those budgets, except, you know, as, as read by Vin, and the, that, just to be clear, that it, it's everything except the ones I've highlighted in orange. So, okay, uh, let me go around. And again, I only see part of the, uh, let me see, let's see if I can get the grid here. I'm trying to see if I can get all of you in one, one thing with the different formats here, but uh, that doesn't really work. Okay, so I'll just go around. And uh, again, I can't see the order, so I'm just gonna go in what I see here. Uh, Mr. Alfred. Yes. Okay, Mr. Maxwell. Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Ms. Narcessian? Yep. Uh, Ms. Zemer? Yes. And Mr. Whitaker? Yes. And I vote yes. Okay, so we have a whole bunch of recommended budgets. Okay, now let's talk about the ones in orange. Unless, well, let me ask a question. Do you want to talk about those now or do you want to defer those? Um, I think that, you know, we can we can vote. Obviously, we can re-vote them on Tuesday if we need to, but I, I think we can vote these budgets if we want to um we'll save the assessors for last i know dan wants to go on a tirade about that so no no no, no. I, I really <laughs> actually right now i want to get some more information from travis's thought on, on the requested uh, additional services so okay okay so if you want to do that then okay we'll do that one first we'll go down the, the well, five in order why don't we just get the library out of the way that just dan can be quiet okay okay so go ahead <laughs> Motion for the library. i would like to make a recommendation so the finance committee votes favorable action for the library budget of no five, no both a recommended budget for FY22 of? Of $527,808. Okay, do I have a second for that? Second. Okay. Um, okay, any debate on that budget? Okay, let's proceed to a vote. Uh, Mr. Alfred. I'm going to abstain as my wife is a member of the Board of Trustees and for some reason the State Ethics Board believes that I need to abstain. Okay, Mr. Maxwell. Yes. Mr. Whitaker. Yes. Mr. Murphy. Yes. Ms. Nersessian. Yes. Ms. Zemer. Yes. And I vote yes. Okay, so that one I'll take out of the color coded thing here. Okay, so, uh, okay, what's next? Uh, so we have the parks, we have the uh, Board of Health. And, well, obviously, the Board of Health and the Building Inspector ones kind of go together. Um, so let's have that discussion. Uh, what do people think? I, I personally, given that Travis has said he's consulted the chair of the Board of Health uh, and that they're on board with the, the plan, I would be fine with voting the lower number. Um, again, between now and Tuesday, we can confirm this or we can make sure that we get that kind of documented that they're okay with that. Um, and obviously uh, can, can deal with it on Tuesday if there's a, a problem. Even goes, um, even even invite them in if they would like if they yes have that, that's what I mean right have them come in if they if they don't have if they have a problem with that the the other thing I will say is uh, what do people think about the building inspector money in terms of the revolving fund versus the budget itself I think it makes sense to keep it in the budget I don't like having the salaries outside of it the revolving fund yeah only the yeah it's kind of a strange thing the revolving fund. I think it makes sense to do that as well. It's certainly, certainly at this point. But I also think we should have a process to clear out those revolving funds. On right, a and that, that's, basis. 
that's on Travis's plate, right? Yep. Give us, tell us how he wants to do it. So the, uh, okay, well, I mean, do we, do we have four members that are okay with that? Oh, so I would like to make a motion that the then, finance. Then use committee. these two numbers then, by the way, Ben, yes. for those okay. two budgets. Thank you. That the finance committee recommend favorable action. No, recommend but, an FY22 budget of. Okay. That the finance committee recommend for an FY22 budget for the following departments. The building inspector for $168,079 and the Board of Health for 173,000, sorry, $173,229. I second that. Okay, any further discussion on those two? Okay, and we'll proceed to a vote. Ms. Zemer. Aye. Mr. Alfred. Aye. Mr. Maxwell. Yes. Mr. Whitaker. Yes. Mr. Murphy. Yes. Ms. Nusessian. Yes. And I vote yes. Okay, so that takes care of these two. Okay, so we're down to parks and assessors. So so for the parks, I, I I think given where we are right now, uh, keeping it as a tax supported uh, number makes sense. Uh, if things change dramatically for some reason between now and town meeting, we can always adjust our, our thinking if we need to. I thought Travis said that we could get coverage for uh, through other means. Well, we're not sure yet. We think that that can be ARA funded, ARPA funded. So I think if it can be funded in other ways, I think we should do that. I'm not, I think that it absolutely needs to move forward one way or the other, but if we can get someone else to fund it, then we should do that. Well, but so, but if we voted in now, we have that flexibility. If we don't vote it in now and, the, and ARPA doesn't cover it for some reason. And right, that, that's what I was just going to say. We don't know okay. for sure yet that it can cover it. Okay, but we should pursue that would be my suggestion. Yeah, and I think that's what Travis was saying. That's okay. that is his, his intent as well. Um, yeah. yeah, so that falls under the bucket of something that, if it's funded elsewhere, should fall into free cash, right? Because it should be unexpended from within the budget. So, all right. So, you would want that essentially. But we'll we'll revisit before hitting that line. You're you're recommending keeping it in, and then we'll revisit before we charge anything to it. Um, where we are with ARPA. So yeah, saying? I mean, by July 1, we'll know, right? Well, we should have a clear, hopefully at least some clear picture with ARPA by July 1 when it kicks in, so, okay. you know. Yeah, and long term, we're going to have to be funding for it anyway, so it just gives us a break for a year. Well, well that, that's exactly what my thought was, was it's not like we can have that at zero forever. So, you know, I think it's uh, you know. And Mark's planning on hiring some, an external uh, either firm or individual right this is not being sort of sourced through sean's team correct um, no the the contracted services are outside of the dpw okay perfect okay thank you so can i make a motion yes and so i make say a favorable action okay <laughs> i make a motion that the finance committee recommend the budget for fy22 for the parks and rec department or parks commission, whatever you want to call it, of $141,929. Aye. Sorry. Oh. Sorry. I was going to do it all slow like he was doing it. <laughs> I wanted to make sure everybody heard it correctly. Yes, yes. Um, okay, so do I have a second on that? It was me, I second. Okay, I, well, I just wanted to make absolutely sure. <laughs> okay, any further discussion on the park commission budget? Okay, let's proceed to a vote. Uh, Ms. Zemer? Aye. Mr. Alfred? Aye. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Ms. Nersessian? Yes. Mr. Maxwell? Yes. Mr. Whitaker? Yes. And I vote yes. Okay, so that's one more. Uh, okay, last one is the assessor's budget. So, uh, but now, now, uh, Dan, do, I mean, how do you want to do this? Do you want to change the number? Do you want to make a statement? The reason I said is because if you're not wanting to change the number, then I can allow the motion well, to be made and seconded and then have that as part of the debate. I, I don't know yet. Okay, okay, so go ahead and say, say what so, you want so, to say. Then. So there are two things with the assessor's budget, obviously, right? There's the stipends and then there's the, um, and then there's the request for additional, uh, 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 you know, uh, outsourced uh, assessment. The uh, stipend committee's report was that uh, suggested that we that we go to uh, that, that the recommendation was that we phase them out 
essentially beginning next year because people had already taken out paperwork for, for this year. And so I'm not uh, opposed to that. My, my, um, uh, Travis, I don't what what was the position that the, the select board took uh, when they went through the warrant uh, on the on the uh, sniping committee's report? Um, they accepted the report as a comment, the select board comment under Article Four, which is the uh, elected salary. So the clerk and the two stipends fall under Article Four. The comment references the fact that the stipend committee was set up and has issued a report. Uh, with recommendations to phase this out, which would impact budgets as early as FY23. Okay, so they, they didn't take any uh, position on the, the... Well, that's what I was going to say. Did they take a formal vote on that, on the, the report to to implement the recommendation? I just want to be clear. Did they did they vote to implement the recommendation or... There has been no vote of the select board on the stipend committee. They accepted the report okay. and then okay. the comment references it so that it's on the record of the warrant that the report was issued with a recommendation which would impact um, a budget as early as FY23. I mean, I, I can send you the call. I think I sent you the comment. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. So, so, so I know this is really more Article 4 than, than this budget, but since they're intertwined. Well, it obviously impacts this budget, so yeah. What I'm, what I'm confused about is how, given that there is no specific, so given that the, the recommendation didn't result in no specific change this year to anything, right? A, a vote um, to continue paying stipends or a vote to implement the uh, stipend committee's findings is essentially the exact same as from a, from a budgetary matter for, for this year. And without a sort of a, a recommendation or any kind of comment from the uh, select board, how how will town meeting make its its uh, sort of, if, you know, if decide, how will it make its sort of, um, view uh, known. Um, are you asking me? Well, I, I'm, I'm, I mean, I, I don't know if you maybe, maybe don't know the end. I mean, what it would be considered, you know, you know, uh, in order as far as this, this article goes. So again, I mean, the comment references the stipend committee. The stipend committee was intentionally not disbanded so that they'd be available to town meeting to answer any questions. At some point, you know, uh, somebody could just make, you know, request that they make a statement. I don't know that they're preparing to, but I, I know that they know it's a possibility. Um, in terms of an actual vote for town meeting to take, which I think is what you were driving at the other night, I don't see a vote here. Um, and again, referencing the fact that the report is in there so that it's in the, you know, the report is referenced in the warrant and that the impact may be seen in FY23 is really sort of the, the tracking in terms of, uh, paper trail. Uh, again, it's, it's that may be seen in 23, you know, it's, it's oh, for what purpose, right? There's no, if there's no vote and there's no conclusion from the select board, there's no implication from that report. If the town isn't being required to vote on the conclusion, and the select board is not concluded, then there is nothing that will change. Could or could certainly could change, and there's nothing we and, and really I'm looking for some honestly guidance because last year it was sort of, you know, ever you know, damn the FinCom for you know trying to set policy and to do all this stuff. And town meeting sort of said, you know, okay, well, spend some more time on this. We thought it was too quick and you know, there wasn't enough effort on it. So, so the select board got up, they promised to, to have a stipend committee, they did. Uh, and it's like we're also said that they would come back to town meeting with conclusions, and the, the stipend committee came to a conclusion, but the select board are not is not coming to town meeting with a conclusion. And so that 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 I, I'm like, I'm, what, what do we do as a finance committee when we're you know, I I, I want to have, I want to have some sort of we have, we have nothing to implement in the sense that they they haven't told us which direction they want to go. Okay, Mr. Murphy, you have your hand up, and I see Tina has her hand up. So yeah, can I make a suggestion that they for instead of personnel, we carve out the elected officials from the personnel line. So then it's clear what we're doing and we can deal with it next year and there won't be, oh, well, it's all carved within personnel. I think it's two separate things. They, two articles, that was the issue that people, the governance committee or somebody was pointing out. We voted on it and you know we had the big debate, what was gonna happen? We voted, we made a recommendation, blah, blah, blah. So if it's separate, everybody can have a debate there too on the separate line items. 
that's yeah. one thing. I totally agree with Dan. They should have said something. They didn't say anything. I mean, should it be our role? I'm saying, okay, in light of, or, you know, what, Okay, well, let's, let's hear from Tina. She's can tell us what the select board's thinking. Okay, go ahead, go ahead Tina. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I don't want to lose sight of, of two things. The first is that the, the stipend committee did make a recommendation that was accepted, which is it's a town meeting decision. So I, I'm a little lost uh, on the need for the select board to, to that vote. Was, that was not the town, that was not the select, the stipend committee's decision. That was their initial recommendation. They changed the recommendation to phase out the stipend. It's obviously everything is up to, is a, is a town meeting decision, but that, you know, so, so just saying it's up to town meeting that, the yeah, so, I, so, Dan, I, I mean, I did go back and I looked at both documents that were submitted, and I, I don't see language in what the stipend committed submitted in their amended recommendations that retracted what they made the first time around when they said it is no individual elected member's decision, no opinion or uh, or other elected opinion elected officials role to say what should happen it's town meeting and i don't i did not see that change in their second amended recommendation so i carry i i carried that forward so i'm just telling you how i how i see it the other thing that i don't want to lose sight on is what if the stipend committee had come back and said you know what they should all be paid 5000 instead of 2500 would it would the point still be today that we should have voted to to make that change that we would be telling yes. town yes or you should have so taken a position I, you should have taken a position on it okay. okay so that's that's the finance committee's opinion it appears that was was not the opinion of the select board but, but, but to be clear i'm not i was i'm not suggesting how the the, the select board should have voted but that the select board should have taken the report of this uh, of the uh stipend committee and made a recommend you know and, and made a recommendation it could have been implement the stipend committee's report ignore the stipend committee's report Alter the stipend committee's report. Throw it out and let's take another. Do another stipend committee. I mean, just just. It was accept. It was accept the stipend committee's um, report. And so perhaps this is a well, difference of agreement, and we need to leave it here. But m where I'm coming from, and, and what I read and reviewed, uh, is that they did not retract their first recommendation, which is that this is no one individual's opinion that matters. This is a town meeting vote. I, I don't want to okay, put so words so in your Dan, Dan, I just want to. I just want to clarify. Make sure I'm clear on this from Tina's perspective. So Tina, are you saying that the report of the stipend committee, I just want to be clear, the report of the stipend committee should be shared with town meeting, obviously it's public, they can read anytime they want, um, and that town meeting should take a vote on what to do with the stipends? Well, so now let's get to their second recommendation, is, which is there's, there's really no FY22 recommendation from them. It's an FY23 because they are clear in their recommendation that anyone running or serving um, in 22, 21, excuse me, right now should be granted the stipend. That is right. their recommendation. So there's right. no okay. FY22 impact. But that's not the question I asked you. I'm saying you're, you're right. It doesn't for FY22, but are you saying that the, 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 let's say that let's say there was, and I'm, I know it's late now, but I'm saying let's say hypothetically you had put an article on the warrant that said uh, to you know to to decide what the town wanted to do with the stipend committee report, and then a motion was made to say okay accept and implement the conclusions of the report, and town meeting voted yes there would be no impact on FY22, but then in preparation for FY23, then when this you know the modifications were made, it would be clear. I mean that's that's all I'm saying is that kind of the process you envision. Just because it doesn't have a, we, we need, we, we don't want to wait till May of 2022 to say, okay, we took them out of the budget because we followed the report or, you know, our recommendation is to take the town meeting, take them out of the budget. You know, it, it seems like there should be an opportunity before then for the town to say, yes, we agree with these conclusions or no, we don't. And then that sets, tells us what we do going forward in terms of budget. I, want, I don't want to have this debate again. I want to know what town meeting wants, whether we're doing implementing this, the, the suggestions of the stipend committee or not, and then we move forward and we, we do it or we don't. I, I just I don't you know I, I just want to be done with it, whether we're doing the stipend or not. So I so by yeah, the way, I mean I I see this as a difference in point of view is is how I see this. I I don't know what else to say right now except that we are honoring the recommendations of the stipend committee. I understand the position that puts members of the finance committee in given your the the 
well, given well, comments made by the finance committee in the past on the role of a stipend. But I think that the point of, well, I know that the point of view that the select board has taken is to accept their recommendations and then follow their recommendations. And I believe that is what we are doing. If there's no, a difference. The, the, accepting a report is not accepting their accepting recommendations. Accepting is not saying you're going to follow it. That's exactly the issue. But Travis, you wanted to jump in here? Yeah, I got a question. All right, so you've read the recommendation of the stipend committee and the finance committee is in favor of their recommendation. So the issue, it, it, somebody jump in and tell me if I'm wrong, right? So if I'm understanding the issue, you're you're uncomfortable with the fact that there is nothing on the May 10 town meeting warrant that can be voted on like to to essentially substantiate the stipend committee report. But you're you're comfortable with the stipend committee report um, you understand the impact of it starts in 23, and the issue is really that there's nothing to vote on. Is that correct? No, the, yeah. the issue the issue is this, Travis. It's if town meeting had the opportunity. You know, Tina's point was, hey, the Cyber committee said town meeting should decide, right? So by not having the opportunity or a means for which for the town to decide in this May, now maybe we could deal with it in October, right? But but by not having a means to decide. We end up, you know, let's say we get to FY23 and we're a year from now and we say, okay, the report said in FY23, this is what we do. So we did it, right? Now, obviously, town meeting can accept or reject, but then the whole, we, it, it, the whole point is if town meeting is given the opportunity to weigh in on the conclusions of the report and say, yes, we agree with this, implement it, right? Then, that, then we don't have to have the debate. If we make the change next year, we say the town, Per the, rec per the committee report said, let town meeting decide. Town meeting decided we are implementing this in the budget in FY23. Right. And oh, by the way, in the, in the interim, the, the, in the interim, the select board could disband the stipend committee. They may not be at town meeting, you know, next year. You know, I mean, just so let's just deal with it this year. I mean, that, that and, and so. Then, then I think the issue is the fact that the stipend committee did not make a recommendation um, that, that, that this be a FY22 town meeting you know, debate that, that that they didn't specify that because that's what you're saying. Your assumption no, that, that's, that's, is that's that's no, come on, no. come on. They, but they that's did exactly what they said when they when they came in and talked to us that it should come up at town meeting. The intent was that it was coming up this it spring. Up. It, it, the discussion will come up at town meeting. There is nowhere no, that not, I see on the on the warrant that would that they, they could not easily be be argued as out of order because it is not part of the warrant. But can I just say something? Can I just yeah. say something? This. To me, this is incredibly frustrating. What is frustrating is that the initial report was given to the select board prior to nomination papers being due. That report was based on misinformation. I don't know where the Cypher Committee got that misinformation, but if they had the correct information, the report would have been written, it would have been given to the select board before nomination papers were due. So, Once they received the correct information and resubmitted a report, it was too late. The reason that they are that they've said it's too late is because nomination papers were turned in. Yeah, and so, and, by the way, we could run into the same issue next year, right? In theory, if the meeting hasn't weighed in. So, so to say that now that it's too late to do something because. People turned in nomination papers to me is disingenuous because people who received the report knew that that information was incorrect. People must have known that that information that that report was based on was incorrect. And to me, it is extremely frustrating that town meeting was told, you will, we will postpone this decision until we have a report, we'll form a stipend committee, and then that stipend committee was given misinformation. And I find that unacceptable. And then to have next year, we're going to have to come up with guidelines. What are the guidelines going to be for a stipend? We don't know. I, I mean, how it's just, it, it should be on the board so that when guidelines come out next year, it's part of a guideline. That's it. Okay, so, okay, so I, I think that we know where everything stands. So, so, you know, to to the point that it doesn't impact FY22 necessarily, 
um, we can we can have further debate on the issue. I think that that we've made our point clear that we would prefer that the town, given that the report said let the town weigh in, that the town is given the opportunity to weigh in. Okay, um, Michelle, did you have anything else? I just want to know before I lower your hand. Okay. Um, okay. The excitement so, committee, though, absolutely did come to a conclusion. Yes. And so, yes, that, that, and to, then just to be clear, they, anything otherwise, the entire debate has nothing to do with with the stipend committee's performance. They did exactly what they were chartered to do. Right, and, and we just wanted, I mean, honestly, we're trying not to take any kind of, you know, usurp anyone's authority. We're trying to actually get the decision that was promised so that, that yeah. we would have by the by the committee. This is this is so frustrating because we go out there and we, we try to sort of, we do something and we're told, well, no, you know, you're taking policy and you're making policy decisions, you're usurping everyone else's authority. Okay, so the stipend committee is formed, decision was made, and now it's, it, I mean, it's just, and now we're being told, no, we can't act on it because it wasn't until next year. And then, I mean, it's just, yeah. okay. So, the second issue yes. that I have, and I'd like some information for Travis about if it, unless anyone else wants to talk about the stipend anymore. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, I, I do, I do have course. a, I do think that we, um, the fact is, is it should come up this spring because in order to act on it next year, it needs to be discussed and concluded on it so that it can take effect, so that we're not in the same position next year if exactly where people are debating whether to pull papers or not. It should be on the warrant this, this spring. That was the intent at the town meeting. That was what was discussed. I, I also, I would echo Michelle, I'm very frustrated that it's not coming up for discussion. And it's really not on the warrant. The only way that I can think of the town it would be able to really sort of sort of show what it wants would actually be to reduce the, the stipends uh, this year. But I, I'm not, I mean, look, I'm not trying to pick a fight over that, but I'm just saying like, because there is no warrant article to accept and implement the, the, the report of the stipend, you know, the recommendations of the stipend committee, because it's just sort of some a comment underneath it. I'm, I'm not sure that any real debate about it even would be, is going to be considered in, in order. I, I don't, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, so it's 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 very frustrating, and so I, I don't. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask that we first of all I want to find out a little bit more about the other stuff from Travis, but I'm gonna ask that we sort of hold off a week and see if maybe Travis somebody can come up with some sort of solution for this in the interim because the warrant's closed, so I don't think they can add an article to it. Or, they they, they can really up really until the very last minute. They can open it anytime they want. So well, that's the true. The board could open it and put something on it if they want to. Okay, so what was your inference? So, so are you recommending we hold off on this last budget until Tuesday? Voting on it, but I still would like to talk to Travis just so we don't have right. to. Okay. I so, think we so should hold I off and see if we can get them to open up the warrant and fix it because it should be on the warrant. Okay. Yeah, but so, it's not going to so, matter from the point of view. It's regardless of what we're, the whole thing is, we're going to stay, keep the same budget. Just, well, I just want to talk about. No, the, but he has some other issues with the budget. Oh, then, so. okay. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, okay, so, so, so hopefully in Tina time, and Travis are hearing that we would like you to reconsider uh, Article 4 and whether to, to amend it, open the open warrant, amend it to include language that allows for, for a specific vote on accepting the findings and, imp and implementing the, 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 um, the recommendations the recommendations of the, of the segment committee. That's all I'm looking for. I'm not, I'm not trying to take any, you know, I'm not trying to take any power or anything. I just want to settle this. The even if thing, it's implemented next year. Even if it's implemented it's next year, yeah. Just let's they did the report now, everything's fresh in their minds. They're they're still not been disbanded. They're here, they're planning to show up. Let's just okay. take care of it. Uh, so so are we in agreement and yell out no if you're if you don't agree that we're not gonna vote board of assessors tonight because Dan has other issues with that. Because I just want to stop sharing so I can see everybody if uh, yeah, I agree with that. Let's okay. hold off. So I'll stop sharing just so I can see everybody again okay so okay are we at least going to discuss board of assessors tonight and yes to yes extent. dan dan had other things he wanted to discuss we actually right. have an assessor here so. Charles, you, you you said you had an opinion on the uh the incremental requests for um uh for contracted services for for assessments and well this is not your budget i, I do see that mary's here and she's uh, hopefully if she's willing and wants to can, can weigh in um the information that kathy uh the principal assessor shared with me about the number of assessments that they did each year and, and all that it didn't really show me why the, the extra $20,000 was needed because it, it seemed like with the 500 assessments that they needed, they've done more than that in, in, in years without this additional money. And so I'm just not convinced um, that that $20,000 is needed. So I, you, you seem to have some information maybe and maybe you can help clarify that from, from your understanding of, of the process. 
I would be happy to get into it, but I know that um, there was a meeting of the Board of Assessors this morning in which the two liaisons were invited to speak. So, um, you know, I'd be happy to answer any direct questions. Um, I, I'm i not used to having finance committees uh, not see the value in the, the assessor's office. I'm, it's it's a function that uh, I really- Whoa, 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 whoa. No, no, I'm, no I'm, I, I, I didn't mean it okay, that. Just to be clear, this is one member of the finance committee who has uh, questions. Okay. Not, yeah, nor, nor do I not see the, nor do I, I, I do see the value in the assessing department. Okay, I, I, I apologize. I didn't mean to say it that way. I, I It's difficult to sometimes value the assessing function. It's a very difficult function to to sort of make people understand. And I know that there's a number of people on here who understand it. When I was saying last week, and I, I'll get into if you'd like, but I, again, I mean, there was a conversation today that I don't want to usurp, is simply that it is never, it is always going to be a horrible um, uh, outcome for the town if we fall behind in assessing to the point where we're not allowed to set our tax rate. The, the outcome of that um, it can can hold us back for years um, to, to dig ourselves out of issues when we get into them with the state when it comes to this function. Um, and that, that was what I was going to get into. And and the, the report that she gave you, I, I have opinions on. But again, um, if there was a conversation today and the liaisons are, are better to, equipped to to speak to the um, the full committee, then I will let I'll come in at the end if you need me to. Okay. Okay. So who wants to Raise your so, hand if you want to say anything, but go ahead, Tim. So uh, Travis is, is absolutely right. Mark and I did go and join the assessors this morning. Um, we, we had a good conversation. They were talking about how in 2021, 2020, uh, they held off on a number of the inspections assessments so that people could respect social distancing. That's created a backlog that they do need to recover from. Um, they were also very patient and good in pointing out that we do have an increasing number of assessments that get performed every year and it only benefits the town to have the resources to be able to go out and perform those assessments so that we can identify the full value of properties where right now we may not be quite meeting that objective. Mary, did, did I do a halfway decent job of summarizing that or what, what did I miss, Mary? Oh, uh, I think you did a fine job. Thank you. Um, you know, I think, it, I think probably if you just bear with me for a minute, um, the bottom line is when, with the numbers that we gave you, you were able to see that there were times when we were doing higher uh, number of inspections in a given year and other times when it was lower. On average, it was 550 a year. And that is what we set for ourselves or for the department. 500 was the sort of, you've got to do 500 to be able to get through the whole rotation, <coughs> excuse me, within the decade. The decade mean referring to the fact that you've got to do an inspection on every property in town uh, once within a 10 year period. So that was the target, that was the goal. But things happen. Um, this department's had some real bumpy roads in the last several years with staff changes and that kind of thing after Don left, uh, Linda retired and so forth. So there are times again when we would contract more out than in. Right now is a particularly crunchy time. Uh, again, um, the assistant has retired. So we are back to just having the assessor. Um, and there's no way in God's green earth that, you know, Kathy's going to go out and do both the inspections of all the new, new building permits. I mean, they're coming fast and furious. So we've got the building permits. We have kept those up all this time because those were primarily outdoors. You didn't have to go into someone's home. And um, people were very fearful about letting anybody in. They're always very fearful about letting us in because after all, we're, you know, the mean old assessors. So the bottom line is that that need is going to be there. We are probably going to have to hire um, contract personnel to do what's ahead in the next six months anyway because of the change in um, personnel. Um, we haven't gotten a great crew. Of, we haven't gotten a lot of applications. And in the applications, there are, there's nobody right now that even has the skills. Um, the problem is across the state. It isn't just here. 
there's a huge shortfall of personnel with experience. So with all of that said, um, we are very comfortable with the idea, with the fact that we need to have some additional uh, money to, to meet the need and to get the 500 that have to be done for the end of the decade, continue to keep up with the permits and start on the 500 that needs to be done to keep, you know, to keep the year going, to keep the decade, the new decade started and, and proceeding. Um, that's it. And I think Tim or, or, or maybe it was Mark, one of you, probably you, Tim, said, you know, use the reserve fund. When you, when you run out of money, come and use the reserve fund. Um, it was good to hear that we didn't have the sort of drop dead date of June, but the year, the year, fiscal year is kind of an issue for us. We all kind of stop in government in the month of July, everything is shifting over to new systems and so forth. And that's really peak time for us to be out in the field or for somebody to be in the field. Um, so those, you know, we have some, some money that we need just to carry through those peak times. Um, I guess I would just say this. I don't understand, I think it's a damn lean office. It's not like we're sitting on a boat of cash, a boatload of cash, or that we spend money frivolously. I mean, Kathy practically counts paper clips. It drives me crazy, but um, we're not a frivolous office. There's not much to be frivolous about. So that's the best I can tell you. I don't know. I don't know what else you want from us. So, Mary, this morning there was also a conversation about um, trying to think of how to say this in an open meeting. <laughs> the, the costs of pending potential, the, the cost All of the potential litigation. litigations um, and trying to have some money set aside for that, particularly given. Um... All right. So that's a good point. So that is the other other good reason to keep a little bit of money set aside for this um, this board. But um, we're pretty confident that we're going to be in court this year, uh, not because of local assessments with you know, average people kind of thing. Um, but because of the three utility companies that we have to deal with, we have both the gas, we've got two power, two electric. So um, these folks under, you remember last year we first came in for, we've got to get $4,000. And this is for the assessments that the state required. If we don't pay the 4,000, don't get these outside inspections done by those particular people, then, we, we the, the town, gets in trouble. This is an unfunded mandate, so we spent the $4,000. We have to spend it every year. The problem is that the assessment that came back from this assessor, that, and there's one in the state, so the, no, I'm sorry, that was, that's the court. This guy came back, came in with an assessment that is a million dollars more than what the utility companies are claiming it should be. So for us, it's like we know nothing about assessing utilities. There's no, we have nothing to stand on. We have no legitimate excuse for reducing the assessment, none that we can justify. So we're just gonna go with the state assessment, the, the appraiser's assessment. And obviously the utility companies are really good at being able to you know, pay for lawyers and stuff. So whether this money is in here now doesn't, in a way, it doesn't even matter. And it's going to get spent. And if it's a matter of, you know, you need to take the money and shuffle it around and so forth, you can shuffle it, but the cost is still going to be there at some point. This is an almost guaranteed because we've thought right from the beginning that it was a bit of a setup by the state. And I misstated, I said we had three utilities, we have two, and it's $2,000 for each one. Okay. Uh, Dan, you had your hand up? Yeah, so, okay, so I can appreciate that, Mary, but that, that was not information that was included in the initial um, budget request. And to be clear, if, if that was considered sensitive information. Well, that, oh, the, the, the utilities piece is new. Okay, so in terms of the information, we knew we didn't know how far off we were going to be. Okay, so then I guess so. So the per the, the sheet Kathy sent around, the, the nine year average has been five hundred fifteen assessments a year, which is about what we have to do in in next year, correct? Regularly, every year, five hundred and something. So yeah, so 
and you've been able to do this um, with no more, you know, with just with 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 no more than twenty one thousand dollars, and in many years less uh, money. And now I understand that at that point you had a full, you know, you had the assistant, but the assistant's still in your budget. So I'm just, I'm just trying to sort of. So if, in theory, if you were to be able to hire an assistant before the beginning of the fiscal year, wouldn't you then be able to use the assistant? Like, it should be one or the other, right? Like, if you get it, if you get the, the assistant clerk, or the assistant assessor, um, if you were able to hire an assistant assessor, shouldn't that assistant assessor then be able to do assessments to then allow you to meet the, the and you won't need the professional services budget? Or the other way, if you're not able to hire an assistant assessor, then you don't need as much money there, but you need it in, in the in the professional services budget. So I'm just professional services budgets going to you're going to have we are going to have to spend personal services money to maintain. Remembering every year we're we're adding new properties, so every year now our 500 we haven't assessed it for the upcoming decade. We may have to do 600 each year now. I don't know. We haven't done that number yet. But well, this is the last year of, of the of the ten year cyclical. Right, cycle. this is so, the last. And and the request is to go from twenty five thousand to to forty one thousand. So it's sixteen. That's that's a huge. My my point is that's a huge jump to to do what you're telling us is a normal average year amount of of assessment. That that's just what the the. I'm not saying you're a bloated budget. Don't get me wrong. It's our it's our responsibility to to look at everything and try to make sure that we're because you know again this is taxpayer dollars. So I'm not I'm not saying that this is. This is bloated, but it is a large incremental increase, which I just can't. It's it, I, I can't. I, I'm looking at the numbers, and I just I can't make sense of it. And and I'm still. I know we don't want to miss it, but like why? It seems like it it, it should be able to be done within the twenty five thousand dollars to me. And if for some reason it's not, then we do a reserve fund. I, I don't. It doesn't. It. it, it I, I don't know. I, I just I. I can't. I can't get there. I, I, and, and no one's really been able to. I, I understand the issues, and we got to get there, and we, we definitely don't want to miss. But at the same time, it, it doesn't seem like we have an unusually large number to do this year, because we've averaged five fifteen, and we have five hundred and something. To, to but we do. have to do this year's as well, right? So we have to do a thousand. But you have you have the budget for this. You still have the budget for 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 this year's. We're talking. We're, we're talking about just. The, right. the, you you have that much already. The FY twenty one budget. Is is about eighty five percent expended on that line item for where they are, um, and you know from time to time because as Mary pointed out, some of these things stretch over when the work can be done, especially when it's farmed out, is done. Um, you know over a, an arbitrary June thirtieth deadline, you know we can uh, encumber money um, and those types of things. But at, at the end of the day. Um, you know, I think this is one of the, the key examples, and there are many others where we don't dictate the workflow, the state does, and there is no give. Um, you know, I, I think what, what Kathy put together in terms of the workload, it, I, I know, I, I understand you're saying that you don't find it compelling. At the end of the day, I, I there's a number of things where I look at the state, I don't find the reasons behind some of these things compelling, but we meet them because we meet regulations and we need to do things the way that the state tells us to. Um, the only thing, and I, I don't know if it came up earlier, I've had discussions with Kathy on, are, you know, as as was stated, I think Tim brought up, so it must have been brought up this morning, is that uh, some of the backlog is COVID-related. Um, Kathy's looked at a, a couple towns in the area that have made the case that some of the work can be CARES Act supported because of that impact. And there's also a couple of things that Kathy and I, uh, Kathy specifically, but I, I've, I have friends in the assessing field and I've been talking to as well, is that some of this work, um, you know, three years ago, um, what the state would accept from the town has changed slightly. Um, so, you know, there are some things where we can meet um, based on sort of drone footage that that gets us through what would normally be an inspection um, previously that, that is a different cost uh, structure, right? So. At, at the end of the day, though, the, the number that they put together is to meet the need that we know is there to make sure that our tax rate is set. And to not do that, um, it just is just dangerous to me. Um, you know, if we can do some of the work through CARES, um, I, you know, I, certainly I will make sure that, uh, that Kathy gets sort of everything she needs in terms of getting that process through the select board so that it's not tax supported, it's, it's CARES Act supported. But again, I mean, to, to remove it, 
uh, or to recommend, excuse me, removing it is just, you know, I, it's, it's, it's dangerous in my opinion. I, I get your point, but, but let me just say it, it, what, the, the, what's confusing about that though is if we're 85% expended in, in the outsourcing of, of budget, but we're, we're not meeting the goals for this year because uh, of COVID, I would think that we would be well below there because Kathy would have been able to do most of them because you know that would be what I mean that would be what she would let be me doing. jump in, please. I'm having a stroke. <laughs> but Travis reminded me there is a an outstanding. I'm a, I'm assuming that this is what the largest largest part of what's you called last week or the week before our stash of cash, and I went and I said to Kathy, stash of cash. And then that came up at the meeting. And what the quote, we apparently there is still money sitting there where with a vendor. And if you remember, we did the commercial and industrial this last year. And I think it was for all, I think it was for like 20,000 or something. I don't even remember the number. And when they went through it all, it's all been done. We've got all of their reports and all of the assessments are in, but they haven't billed us. Wait, wait, I said stash of cash? Yes. And I heard it. Yeah, so. I really, I don't remember saying stash yeah. of cash. I don't. Well, sometimes, I'm sorry, but sometimes you do sort of say things, Dan, and other people hear them and, you know, kind of. Okay. But anyway, I forgive it. I don't care. I'm just saying, but when you said that, it was like, we are sitting on stash of cash. I wonder what that is. I'm, I'm and sorry. went and checked. So, so that's what it, there is an outstanding invoice that we have not. And I remember her saying she's been calling them and asking them for it because it gets to be a problem with Sharon when she goes to close out books, which is fast coming up. So that there is a piece of money. And it's a Warren article. Mary's referring to a Warren article. I am. <laughs> what are you talking about? So, 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 okay. So, so Michelle, you had your hand up. Want to make sure. You... Yeah. What happens if, because of COVID, people don't let you in their houses? Well, that happens all the time. Yeah. That happens all the time. All we can do is walk the perimeter. We're allowed to take pictures. We're allowed to walk the perimeter. And we now have permission to use drones. How about them apples? But you don't, we don't, you know, there's, that's kind of it. And it's very intimidating to come up to a family, to a house and have somebody. <laughs> They could be very, very threatening and very intimidating to you about not wanting to let you in the house. And God forbid you should talk to one of their kids. Uh, seriously, you know, you go in and some 12 year old or 10 year old opens the door and you just start to explain that, hi, I'm with the town. You know, whew, they don't make it. It still counts as you, you still document it and still. Oh, yeah, that counts. That counts. That counts. Okay. Yeah. No, you don't have to go inside for it to be counted. Otherwise, we'd all be in deep yogurt. Okay. People don't like it. Some people. But anyway, there is a bill to pay. So if there is some cash floating around, that's the bill for um, the commercial and industrial. But I may be talking about the wrong pot of money anyway, Travis, am I? Yeah, so there was a there was a Warren article, and I had, I had sent to um, the FinCom and everybody who had it under their departments that there was an assessing one that had ten thousand dollars left in it. So, and I thought potentially this could be a scenario that was going to get you guys the work that would not require twenty two. Right? I'm just looking for solutions here. Um, but in in pulling that thread, Kathy's recollection was no, all of that work should be done. So she's trying to confirm that the vendor has actually billed us for everything before saying that that money is available. Because if it's just simply the bill needs to be paid, then the money's not available. And if it's not, then that you know could accomplish more work that would not be needed in the 22 budget. That was the conversation that I had with her. I, I believe we're talking about the same thing. Yeah, sounds sort of familiar. Okay, so let's let's. I want to try to wrap this up in terms of get the information question. we need to make decisions. So go ahead, Sue. Yeah. So can we talk a little bit about the drone? And do we already have a drone? <laughs> no. Okay. And how much are they? Because there's a lot of drone usage going on. So, I mean, rather oh, no. than paying rather than paying personnel costs, if we have a drone that can do the same thing, and we don't have the requirement to go inside, then why not see if that would be more cost effective to use a drone? Well, that's part of what Travis was talking about with the CARES Act or ARPA money, is that this is the first time that they have ever, the state has ever allowed 
for possibly using drones along with, you know, sort of a GPS kind of thing to pinpoint, take pictures from the outside and so forth. Guaranteed, we will look at it, promise, no question. question. And we've joked about it for the last two years, but we've never been allowed to do it because the state wouldn't allow it. You know, the one- started accommodating. What's that, Travis? The state has started accommodating us yeah. getting the work done in different ways because of COVID. So this is not something they used to accept. We, mm -hmm. did, we own multiple drones in Danvers. You need to be, F, you have to have an FAA license. You have license. to have license, right? Yeah, yep. and all that stuff. Uh, I, I don't think that's a huge burden here, but I, I don't know that in 22, I, I see us rolling up a drone. Um, <laughs> I mean, we may be able to, but um, I, I think I saw Chief Cassidy raise his hand. So I, before we, but uh, it's, I'm not against the idea, um, but I, I think also some of the things, and, and this is this comes into play one again, dealing with the state, is that if they allow the drone, I don't know that they allow us to take the pictures by a drone or if we need to outsource it. I, I actually don't know the answer to that question, so I can look at it and I can talk to Kathy. If we can own it ourselves and do the work, uh, I think as Mary pointed out, that's something to look at. Yeah, I think yeah. I, I do think we should. And I think, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. I know COVID has shifted a lot of things and moved sort of um, many things forward, but I doubt this is one that would you know, be walked back just given the technology advances that we have. And we are seeing, I mean, even in my industry, we do inventories with drones all the time. So it's something that absolutely should be looked at because then you can reduce those ongoing costs. So absolutely. depending on obviously how, you know, how it has to be applied, but I would encourage the town um, in very short order to, to investigate that. I think it would be, it could, could potentially be a cost savings. Absolutely, we agree. You know, we've as we've as I said, there have been plenty of times when we've talked about oh, if only we had one. But you know, as I say, it's just started. It takes the state a while. You know, the the other thing I just want to make one little sort of big picture piece about this. Really and truly, this office, the board of assessors, is a lot like the housing authority. It's really an arm of the state. That's it. The state must have, it must have been too expensive or impossible or whatever to get everything done that they needed to do. Um, but th this, there's nothing. We don't inhale before the state says it's okay. Um, it's been a little bit of an eye opener. So this one, this one's a little, this, I find this a very, very weird little board, but not the people, but just the responsibility of it. It's just a little weird. Okay. So, so, so as I said, in the interest of time, because this is the one thing, uh, does anybody have any more questions for Mary about the budget? That's what we're trying to decide. Um, as I said, we agreed we would not vote on it unless everybody feels that they want to vote on it, because uh, I think that Dan wanted to follow up with Travis on some information. Um, but since Mary's here, if anybody has any other things they want to ask, now's the time to ask. Okay. Okay, if not, okay, if everybody's set and we don't need you know, any more information from Mary. Um, and you and Dan's got to go off and do some follow-up with Travis and or Mary, I guess. Um, you well, know, uh, really to see if the, if the select board is going to put it on the warrant, I guess, or, or something like that. There's not much additional information. I need. I think it was more. Okay. Well, well, I'm just saying, I thought you wanted to withhold voting that budget. Did you want to vote that tonight? You want to? No, I do want to withhold voting the budget. I want to think about everything I've heard. Today. Okay. So fine. Okay. So, all I'm saying is that if we're not voting that budget, we're done, right? If everybody's got the information they need from the assessors. So so uh, uh, I just want to make sure that's clear because if uh, everybody's got all the information they want and we're done voting for tonight, I'll entertain the motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Okay. It's not subject to debate. Ms. Zemer. Aye. Mr. Alfred. Aye. Mr. Maxwell. Yes. Mr. Whitaker. Yes. Ms. Narcessian. Yes. Mr. Murphy. Yes. And I vote yes. That concludes the Thursday, April 22nd meeting of the Finance Committee. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, as you probably heard throughout, we will be meeting again next Tuesday on our normal schedule at 7 p.m., which I guess is the 27th. Um, but for tonight, we're done. So thank you and good night.